Hello you magnificent bastards, it's your boy and if you're a YouTube streamer or you just like streaming on the down low occasionally and you enjoy that super chat money, well turns out that you gotta be worried because the mainstream media is after you, well at the very least Buzzfeed is after you. How YouTube's super chat system is pushing video creators toward more extreme content by Ishmael Endaro and Craig Silverman. Well, I couldn't possibly wonder what agenda could be on display today. I, I assume it's just a hard left. I'm just kidding guys, I'm not alt-right, I'm mixed race and you know, I, um, I'm on the left, I'm a libertarian but whatever. Let's continue before this disclaimer is ignored even further. I mean immediately you could just debunk it through the title alone. A super chat, which is a way to pay somebody, isn't pushing anybody towards any style of politics. If anything, it's them seeking out this content or articles like this. Oh well, I guess I should go. Bye! Now, I'm just kidding. I have to go through it because otherwise we wouldn't have a video. In late April, the white nationalist Christopher Cantwell, commonly known as the Crying Nazi, made an appearance on a YouTube channel run by Andy Worski that boasts nearly 275,000 subscribers. Well, it might not be 275,000 for long, I mean, <laughs> that decline, bro. Cantwell was there to talk about how he would build a whites-only country within the United States. At one point during the livestream, a user with the screen name Hitler Did Everything Right spent $5 using YouTube's paid commenting system known as Super Chats to ask Cantwell a question. Yes, it's an interactive form of making money. Like the Twitch system, that's essentially when it's aping. The system in itself, as you've yet to actually prove, is spreading and causing other people to become white nationalists. I mean, say what you will about Andy, he isn't one. He literally just invited them on to speak, using them and they're using him to make money for each other and uh, to boost each other's egos, things like that, at least at the time anyway. That's what was going on. Even then, the people who weren't out, right, were doing the exact same thing, because he didn't just have na white nationalists on. That's a fallacy to say that he only did. But yes, this happened. And they wanted to know how a hypothetical white ethno state would deal with undocumented immigrants. Cantwell said anyone crossing the border illegally would have a fucking wood chipper waiting for them. I think he watched Fargo that night and he must have still had that scene in his head because. And as uh, JF would say, well, you know, he does not mean it literally. He just means that they would be kicked right back out again. I don't know if he actually would kill them. I don't think he has the balls, personally. A lot of them don't have the balls to eat any of the shit that they would spout anyway. That two hour live broadcast saw dozens of other super chats with one person spending $500. What a sad individual. <laughs> $500 on a stuttering mess and a crying Nazi. <laughs> well, it's their money. You guys should have me on more often, Cantor said at one point. You're getting paid tonight. Well, yeah, I mean, alt-right people, they are a bit gullible with that money, but, you know, who am I to judge? Prominent far-right and white nationalist figures have for months been helping YouTube channels earn thousands of dollars thanks to frequently racist commenters who pay for the opportunity to make their voices heard. Well, they're not the only people who are also giving super chats. There are other people who, well, if they're still around who followed Andy for a long time giving him super chats because they like his content and there'll also be other people putting out super chats who are of the opposite opinion now admittedly not as many but they are there it's not as simple as these frequently racist commenters paying for the opportunity to have their voices heard I mean some people don't pay enough to have their voices heard. BuzzFeed News tallied the super chat amounts from two recent videos featuring white nationalists Richard Spencer and Mike Enoch and found they brought in just over $4,000 of which YouTube itself takes a cut. The company declined to say how much. Uh, I'm sorry but you can easily go to Google's home thing about super chats and see that they get I think it's about 30%. Everybody knows they get 30%, at least Google does. I don't know how much YouTube gets, I assume it's half of that but yeah, it's pretty common knowledge what Google gets at least. And as for the Richard Spencer thing, well, you're forgetting one thing. There were two other YouTubers on there who are bigger than him. Sargon of Akkad and Stick Sex and Hammer. That's why a lot of the other people were there giving super chats, or at the very least making it so big that other people were contributing to the super chat. You neglected to mention that, didn't you? Once you go black, you'll never get your society back. Fact, wrote a commenter who wrote $5 for super chat. You see again? I'm not defending these cunts, but they are taking it out of context and they're not actually linking any actual uh, screenshots 
from, from this stream. I mean, to be honest, somebody probably did say that at some point on the stream. But the problem with a lot of those streams is there are plenty of people lapping, a lot of people trolling because they think it's funny. Because you, they're forgetting that there's the crossover between the alt-right and some of the left-wing people, the hate watchers and the blood spots fans who are all trolling each other, all commenting on this, all contributing to the super chats and they're saying things. And to say that it's all alt-right people saying this is not necessarily true. And also, it's not necessarily true to say that it's all coming from a place of hatred and prejudice. Some of it is simply poor humour. Like they just, they think it's funny because they think they're edgy when they're not. Another spent 20 Danish kroner to say, this lying bagel needs his mouth stuffed. Hashtag gas the kikes. Which Jew? I think we'll move on. <laughs> but it's not fair to say that Super Chats are causing all of this because they're not. They've not actually demonstrated this yet. They're just saying, people are saying this, but they can't show me a graph, they can't show me data to show that people are flocking to the white nationalists because of Super Chats. In response to a list of live streams featuring white nationalists compiled by BuzzFeed News, YouTube said some of the Super Chats comments fit its definition of hate speech, that it would revisit its policies on Super Chat eligibility and enforcement. And they already did. I don't know if you've noticed this, but if you try to swear, depending on the swear word, usually American swear words, bloody gets away with it, and certain other words can get away with it, you can't post your Super Chat. You can post a comment, but to everybody else, it would be greyed out and you have the option of turning it on or turning it off. I know it's, it's retarded. But yeah, they're already censoring it. You don't need to get their word on anything or do anything. This this is actually superfluous, this article. They're already doing it. Hateful content that promotes violence has no place on YouTube. We carefully reviewed the live streams that were provided by BuzzFeed and found that the content does not meet our threshold of hate speech. However, we found that the comments shared in Super Chat do. Said a statement from a YouTube spokesperson. So the people in the live stream aren't committing hate speech, but the people in the chat are. It doesn't really make sense, considering a lot of them are saying the exact same things. Only the people in the chat are, of course, in a debate, and they're simply wording it differently. But the people in the super chat are. Ah. Hmm. Honestly, I, I don't understand where they got that. I guess they were, like, a YouTuber are either A, stupid, B, finding a, oh, an excuse to censor super chats, well, they already are anyway, so why would they need any more of an incentive to do so? Or three, they're just placating BuzzFeed. It could be all three, for all I know. They added that Super Chat is a relatively new feature. It's a small but growing source of revenue for some creators, and we are re-examining our policies in light of these edge cases. You re examining You've already censored it. We're already seeing this. What more would you possibly need to re-examine it? Are you going to take it away from certain YouTubers? Because Andy Worski, by your own standards, didn't break the terms of service, but his audience apparently did. So are you going to punish Andy for them? Or are you going to punish the super chatters? Are they going to get banned? Are you going to have moderators look at the chat and flag the comments? Or are you going to flag the video? Because they're not necessarily reflective of him, and neither is he reflective of them. Like, you understand that, right? The use of super chats to spread and monetize racism and hate speech is the latest content moderation and product headache for YouTube, the internet's biggest video platform. He has also drawn fire for hosting videos that exploit children, spread extremism, feature bestiality, and spread conspiracy theories. Conspiracy theories, really? They spread all this? If anything, it's people expressing their opinion. This isn't actually spreading hatred. This isn't necessarily monetizing racism either. These are people literally paying Andy so he can read what they say and he can either agree with it or disagree with it or give it to the people who he's talking with and they can disagree or agree with it. He's just making money, he's using them <laughs> and they're gullible enough to give him that money. And you're stupid enough to make videos like this demanding the censorship of an already censored option on YouTube. So, you're kind of a bit late. You kind of like the progressive voice when he realised that, oh, Saga of Akkad is a Trump supporter, even though it's been known for the past two years. Just because certain people say certain things does not mean that we need to censor these things, because, believe it or not, this could have the opposite effect and draw people away from those movements, because now we know, potentially that is, who has these views, who are the racists, who are the idiots, and we can just walk away. In fact, again, as you probably saw in my video, guys, Andy wasn't doing too well. He still isn't doing too well because of that. But hey, 
monetarily he's doing fine but that's only because those people are willing to give him money if he steps out of line just like with his breakup with jf finally for good he's going to lose a lot of those people in fact probably all of them have gone by now i don't know maybe some of them stick around but it'll be a completely different audience the next time buzzfeed go around trying to you know cherry pick from his streams and then not show us anything. YouTube introduced Super Chats in early 2017 as a way for video creators to engage with their fans during live broadcasts and earn extra income in the process. But as is the case with just about every new engagement and monetization feature, Super Chats have been co-opted and used in ways YouTube didn't design or prepare for. Are you telling me that YouTube creating a different kind of comment system aping Twitch didn't design or prepare themselves for people to say things that they didn't like? Really? Oh, I didn't know that. Are you really suggesting that YouTube was stupid enough to have that kind of oversight? Really? And how is it being co-opted? It's there. It's a public thing that anybody can use. You yourselves writing this article could make a super chat if you're dumb enough. Debunking what they're saying, depending on how much you donate, depending on how many words you're given. Like, that's all you need to do. Or you can just do it in the comments if you're brave enough and if people can see it because those things go down pretty quickly. Oh my god, this is an extremely long article. Oh. A researcher who had been following these live streams told BuzzFeed News that Super Chats are underwriting the growth of extremist content on YouTube by generating monetary rewards for those most willing to push the envelope, all while bringing fringe white nationalist views to a large new audience. When you switch together broadcast and instant monetization, you get a behaviour pattern that moves more and more towards extremes, said Joan Donovan, a researcher with Data and Society, a think tank studying the social effects of new technologies. Mm-hmm. Really? You know that because you can prove this? That simply donating a certain amount of money and writing a comment is somehow making these guys more popular, even though they're not actually that popular and probably never will be? You realise how small the alt-right actually is. And considering the fact that Andy Worski's was, and largely still is, bleeding subscribers because of this suggests otherwise, right? People don't like this. They don't like seeing his channel being flooded with these types of people. Or at least it was. I haven't seen it for a while. The actual evidence that I have contradicts this. Oh, while you can say, yes, Andy Worski definitely got a monetary reward for sort of, kind of, pushing it. He wasn't really pushing it. He was giving it a platform to speak. And he also had the opposite view in many cases. Or in some other streams, he didn't have any alt-right people at all. Some. Not all. The vast majority of them were alt, right? Because they're the ones that bring in the most people because they're a very collectivist bunch. They like to do things in groups. That's why there's so many of them watching the streams. It's weird. It's, it's a group dynamic where they, they stick together and they help each other. Kind of like how the SJWs will signal boost to other people's videos. They do the same, but they do it more with views and they actually go to the actual videos rather than go to other people's channels and then sub to a person they'll probably never watch. The power of super chats is most visible in the growth of a series of live debates dubbed Internet Blood Spots. <laughs> you lost me at live debates. Many of the most contentious debates have been hosted by Worski, a self-described comedian or pro-Trump internet troll Tim Giannet, better known as Baked Alaska. Or, uh, Blacked Alaska, as I've heard recently. <laughs> and Wosky initially agreed to speak to BuzzFeed News, but then broke off contact. He did, however, talk on a live stream about whether he should do the interview, amused about broadcasting it without the reporter's knowledge. Giannet, who years ago was briefly employed by BuzzFeed, did not reply to an interview request. So yeah, I don't blame the two guys not agreeing to an interview with you. You guys will take them out of context, you will lie, you will deceive people, you will just defame them, you will misrepresent them. Yeah, no wonder. I disagree. I would say no. I, I would never, ever give you a moment of my time, unless I'm responding to your articles, that is. While theoretically open to all viewpoints, the participants in these live streams overwhelmingly came from the political right and the far right, including some of the most prominent white nationalists in the US. The resulting conversations inevitably focus on topics such as race, science, white identity, and the so-called Jewish question, and generate thousands of dollars for the channels hosting them. Likewise, a left-wing version could potentially do the same thing, if such a thing theoretically existed. And by the way, it's not just theoretical, because he did have people from the other side come on. In fact, he even had people, I guess you could say Six Seconds and Hammer is kind of on the right, he's a li right libertarian. He was on there to debate Spencer, because he disagrees with Spencer. Then he had somebody on the left side so doing the same thing, and I think they even had... Um, oh, I, I can't remember, they've had a few other left-wingers on there. Kevin Logan, an SCW, one of your own. He was on there, though nobody remembers because it's 
who cares about the potato. One particularly successful debate took place in January on Warsky Live. It featured Richard Spencer and two conservative leading YouTubers arguing the merits of white ethno nationalism. One was a libertarian and one was a liberal. A left-wing liberal. I like how you have to still misrepresent these people. And again, you're misrepresenting what actually was happening. They were not arguing the merits of white nationalism. At least Sargon and uh, Six X Nama weren't. They were arguing against white ethno-nationalism. It was Spencer and a few of the others who were arguing for that. It became the number one trending video on the entire site and has been viewed almost half a million times. It was also lucrative. The Spencer debate brought in more than $2,200 in Super Chats for Warsky's channel, according to a review by BuzzFeed News. Actually, it was more. Way more than that. And, by the way, he since hasn't been able to really achieve the same level, mainly because it means shortly after that, over a period of time, his subs began to drop off and his old audience stopped watching him. Largely. Another debate featuring Mike Enoch, the host of the neo-Nazi podcast The Daily Shower, focused on whether Jews are undermining America through control of the media and government. It generated more than $1,800 in Super Chats, including the comment, Sometimes I hate you so much that I cannot sleep. Well, you know, he is in denial about what he really thinks, and that is, he quite liked Jewish people, otherwise he wouldn't have married one for so many years. No wonder he's saying these things. He's just overcompensating. It's like buying a big car when you have a small penis. So what? They're saying these things, and they're meant to be debates. So there's obviously other people on the other side debating them, right? Who are saying, no, there is no conspiracy, because there is no conspiracy. <laughs> they just do well because of the culture that they were brought up in. It's like the Asians. They just do the exact same thing. In fact, I think Asians are actually more successful than Ashkenazis in America and the UK. So... Have they got a conspiracy? No, apparently not. Now they're the alt right darlings, apparently. The founder of the white supremacist magazine American Renaissance, Andrew Anglin. The founder of the neo Nazi website, The Daily Stormer. Funnily enough, Andrew Anglin is Jewish. Yeah, believe it or not, BuzzFeed, the guy was outed as one a while back. Colin Robertson, a Scottish white nationalist YouTuber known better as the Millennial Woes, or as I call him, the Hover Hand of Doom. He has spoken at White Nationalist events and Greg Johnson, editor of the White Nationalist website, Countercurrents. Many of the debates on Moscow Live also included Jean-Francois Garibi, a Quebec-based white nationalist as well as his co-moderator. Actually, he lives in the US, at least from my remember, unless he's been deported. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't quite get his anchor baby in the end. While some live streams are debates, others can be lengthy interviews or simply gab sessions with several streamers hopping in and out of the hours long conversation as they like. Several YouTube channels post multiple live streams per week, with super chats pouring in from viewers who want to interject their own opinions, reward streamers, or simply have a bigoted remark read aloud by the hosts. A common donation is $1488. A reference to a white nationalist slogan. The blood sports discussions are spread even further by other YouTube channels devoted to clipping the most dramatic moments. Oh, you mean the totally not a highlights channel American Pride? So what, these people chop up the live streams and present highlights to people who don't have the time to watch the whole thing. Those people at the very least aren't contributing either to Andy Warsky monetarily or even Super Chats. So really you should be thanking these guys as well as by dedicated websites and Twitter accounts, the various personalities and shows also have large engaged communities trading gossip and memes on Discord, a messaging platform popular with the far right. Oh, so now they're trying to slander Discord. Discord is popular with almost everybody you can possibly think of. It is the best alternative to Skype and TeamSpeak. I use Discord, SUWs use Discord, gamers use Discord, conservatives, old people, if they're savvy enough. It, Discord is something for everybody. It's popular with loads of different groups. It's not just only popular with the far right. Police are trying to slander these companies and demonize them because they have certain unscrupulous individuals using it. While other streaming services like Twitch also have paid commenting systems, YouTube's unparalleled size and reach risk creating a feedback loop of more extreme content generating more revenue, which in turn fuels more outrageous videos. Oh, the slippery slope where if we keep having all these things happen, it'll get worse and worse and worse because apparently people are gullible and if they listen to one thing, they'll suddenly start believing this. This was predicted by some people almost immediately after Super Chats were introduced with one Verge writer comparing it to the business model of cam girl porn performers. Damn, I mean... <laughs> Isn't that slut shaming? When you pay to have another person perform your twisted little fantasies, the end result is usually a loss of dignity on all sides, Vlad Savov wrote in March of 2017. God, I can't believe this is an SJW progressive writing this. This sounds like 
Somebody from the religious right, or even the alt-right, saying this. Mahoshu. But honestly, this makes no sense. How would there be a loss of dignity? This person, who I theoretically give money to to perform a fantasy, gets a kick out of it, because believe it or not, these women do like doing it. Or men. They do like that kind of thing. They get money, so there's even more of a kick. There's a financial incentive. They feel good about getting money, and I feel good getting my rocks off. Honestly, how is that a loss of dignity? The ecosystem that has strung up around these live streams merges the performative interpersonal drama of professional wrestling with the sensibilities of top radio and the racist, anti-Semitic, and anti-gay vocabulary of 4chan. You do realise that you're talking about Paul, not 4chan. 4chan is not Paul. Paul is not 4chan. Get it right, you idiots. And by the way, the only thing you can really compare blood sports to is wrestling. It's really not like hot radio and not all of it is racist or anti-semitic. It literally is just drama or a load of people in a room on Google Hangouts boring us to death until something exciting happens out of the blue, like in two to three hours time. A writer for Countercurrents recently celebrated the blood sports debates for pushing the Overton window, the range of pol political views seen as acceptable in public discourse further to the right. But they've made no such thing, that hasn't happened. In fact, they've had their own little mini meltdown which is quickly destroying it. Bloodsports doesn't have a long shelf life, it doesn't have the capacity to even do an Overton window shift because it's so short lived. Countercurrents and JF and many others simply exaggerate how good it is to want to inflate their own egos to get more people watching it and to defend it because it really doesn't serve any more of a purpose than entertainment. White nationalists have successfully colonised a small corner of YouTube and have encountered normies. We find ourselves battling stubborn civic nationalists and slippery libertarians as we push inland towards lush parts of the internet outside our echo chamber, wrote the author. Well, at least he's honest that they have an echo chamber and to me it seems like some people aren't exactly willing to get out of it. All of a sudden, liberals and libertarians are talking about race realism and ethno states. Yeah, to debunk you or to debate you about it and to debate you know to what extent the science says this or the science says that and whether or not we should act on it or not that's really what it boils down to they're not talking about it because they agree with you okay just because we got us talking about it doesn't mean that you're winning and that the Overton window is shifting. Some YouTubers have even applied the blood sports formula to real life interactions. In March, Walski and GNA joined another live stream known as Asian Andy for IRL blood sports. The three live streamed their journey around Los Angeles equipped with speakers that blasted out text speech comments from viewers who donated $5 or more. It took mere minutes for the first N word to be broadcast. Well, duh. It's the internet. What do you expect? And again, You've now kind of gotten away from super chats into just blood sports. You're now just completely attacking blood sports. It really doesn't have anything to do with super chats. Like there might be some blood sports channels out there who don't even have the capacity to make a super chat happen because they're not big enough. You do know that, right? There's stricter guidelines towards monetization. And even then, I still haven't seen any evidence that super chats are actually making more people racist or white nationalist. I don't see that. I just see the same group of people that I've seen for the past couple of years, circle jerking, only they've invited Andy Worski, well, at least they did invite Andy Worski into that circle jerk. And well, he's paid the price. YouTube told BuzzFeed News its community guidelines against hate speech harassment and other prohibited content apply to chats as well as videos, and that viewers can flag inappropriate comments. Channel owners have the ability to bring in extra chat moderators, ban specific words and phrases, or turn chats off entirely. See, when YouTube are telling you we already have the tools in place to deal with this crap, leave us alone, you know that it's fucked. <laughs> you know that even YouTube are like saying, really BuzzFeed? We've got everything there, you're adults. Do it yourself. The company also pointed to a February announcement that it's taking a harder line on content that brings harm to the broader YouTube community. Well, unless it makes loads of money like those toy channels or Logan Paul filming dead people, yeah, then they're not they're not going to do much until we hound them into doing something. Then they'll punish everybody. <laughs> yeah. Donovan, the researcher with Data and Society, said the regularity of hateful comments can have the long term effect on normalization, those normalizing those views. And no, that might not be the case, in fact it never really is the case because most people do not suddenly become white nationalists just because there's hateful comments on the internet. In fact, these people have been on the internet for decades and we still don't see them really affecting the world that much. You know, the internet itself cannot actually move the Overton Middle that much, really. 
it might be able to do so in its own little echo chambers and areas but in terms of the real world you actually need to get out there and create the change that's why the liberalist thing is a thing that's why the alt-right did attempt some real life things like the tiki partner thing and charlottesville and ultimately failed because one society doesn't like those views and two well Apart from the police fuck-ups, they fucked up, ultimately. She said that what may start as a very lulzy, jokey, trolley way to get laughs can stop being funny and start becoming part of your own value system through repetition. Oh, so basically what you're saying is these people are brainwashing themselves. <laughs> Citation needed. We are finally starting to understand that it's not always about the seriousness of the ideology or the seriousness with which people take these ideas, she said. The more people get exposed to these ideas and very little pushback on these ideas, they start to believe to the community that they form that these are acceptable and proper ideas to have. <laughs> yeah, because people who are using satire, people who are using jokes, people who aren't being serious, brainwash themselves into becoming white nationalists. Ah, <laughs> uh, And this person is somehow part of a data and society thing. Right, I don't think this person understands how the human mind works. Basically, by that logic, all satirists or people who poke fun at extremist ideologies, and they do it consistently, will end up becoming the thing that they hate. I guess Charlie Chaplin would have become a tramp, right? Because he portrayed a tramp for God knows how many years in Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, he didn't. You see, this is absurd, it doesn't work. And that's the end of the article. This is nothing more than a hit piece against YouTube, Twitch, even Discord, and even against certain YouTube genres. You know, genres that I may not necessarily like, but genres that don't deserve this kind of pushback, considering a lot of the time they kill themselves, as I mentioned before. This is nothing more than trying to get YouTube to censor the website even further. I think the intended goal really is to strap funding from YouTubers that they don't like, people spreading ideas that they don't like. And it's, it's pretty clear that it doesn't really matter if it's extreme right or those people in the middle or even those moderate leftists. They'll just group you in with the conservatives and you will be censored and have your money taken away. I think that's what they want. They want to try and destroy free thought on YouTube, even though YouTube's already doing that and doesn't need BuzzFeed's hit pieces to do it for them. Now, what can we do about it? Well, there's not much we can do. I don't really know. I guess we can continue to call it out. I guess we can hope and wait for a YouTube alternative, which isn't going to happen. I don't think it is. I don't think that the market at the moment can it even allow for such a thing that's why all the competition is either dormant or dies like vid.me it's just it's just not going to happen anytime soon but who knows maybe with more pushback perhaps we can make a change because i personally think the way to defeat these white nationalists is to debate them is to air their views so people know what they think and they know how to avoid them and also now you know there's another way to think because they're forgetting that, you know, they can go to the opposite opinion on YouTube, that those people are there. But whatever, it's best to make YouTube look like it's just a hotbed of extremist thought, when it isn't. It's mostly crap. But, hey, whatever, that's just my opinion. It's been your boy, and I'll see you later.